Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we will discuss the design of a Buckboost converter. We will see how we can generate these plots in MATLAB and also calculate the required components values for our Buckboost converter. We will see everything step by step in our calculations and also verify these in MATLAB simulations. Now, this is the circuit for a simple Buckboost converter. You see again an ideal switch and also the components. We will then now determine the values for this inductor and the capacitor value for our design which is then a design of a buck boost converter circuit having the output voltage of minus 20 volts output current of minus 2 amps and we will have a dc input voltage of uh, 30 volts so we have in this case a, a step down conversion with an inverting action the maximum percentage peak peak output ripple is 1% or 0 0.01 that's given by this expression now before we dive into the calculations in detail, let's see first the waveform. We assume that this is continuous current mode, we will check that of course. So we see then the switch close and switch open operation that's actually shown here. Now the inductor voltage will be then the Vs when the switch is closed. That is actually just this part of the circuit. And when the switch is opened, the inductor voltage will be then the minus of the output voltage or the output voltage will be then minus of the inductor voltage. The inductor current will have then this shape so you actually down increase and decrease in the inductor current that's actually also the ripple in the inductor current itself and the diode current will be like so where you also see the average of the diode current which is related to the average output voltage also the which is also the average output current if you now look at this expression okay let's see now the calculations this uh, first we'll determine what the duty cycle we require for our design now the formula for the duty cycle for the buck boost converter is this you can see actually here the vo absolute value and also the vs which is our input dc voltage and when you now look at the values we get here 0.4 or 40 percent of our duty cycle we also need to select a switching frequency for our switch here so that will be in this case selected as 100 kilohertz this is really an arbitrary value so this is also possible for 200 kilohertz or maybe 50 kilohertz depending on the parameters or the components you have now the load resistor is important looking at the specification what your minimum required load resistor is now just using ohms law we can say the output voltage over the output current that will give us 10 ohms so that means this is the minimum allowed resistor value at the load if you lower this let's say 9 or 10 i mean 9 or 8 or 5 even then you require more current that is not possible because we have designed for this one so this is the minimum value for your load resistor next step is the peak peak inductor current this is by the way a selection so we most of the time select a, a specific percentage of the load current so i say in this case 20 percent of the load current that is then in this case 20 percent of the two amps so will be then 0.4 amps this is again a selection like the selection of the switching frequency you can also take here 30 percent or 15 percent if you prefer again that will affect the component values and also your accuracy this is also based on some experience. The average inductor current can be calculated using this formula. You see here again the duty cycle, the input voltage and also the resistor. So when you now substitute the values for the 0.4, which is, which is our duty cycle, not the 0.4 amps, but just the 0.4 for our duty cycle. The input voltage, the resistor, etc. So you get now 10 over 3 amps exactly, which is then 3.333, approximately amperes for our average inductor current okay now we can calculate the required inductor value so we can say the inductor value can be then calculated using this formula we know the duty cycle we know the vs we also know our um, ripple which is actually shown here and also the switching frequency selected so this will give us 300 micro -Henry's. by the way this can be already calculated you don't need this but this is necessarily later for other calculations now we have this one and most of the time we take a little bit larger than that one so i say this is the minimum i need for the specification in this design so let's then take a little bit larger let's say 10 percent larger so i take now 330 micro henry's now we have changed our inductor value so we have increased that, that means we also will change the ripple peak peak ripple current of the inductor so we need to recalculate the new peak peak inductor current using actually this formula again so just rewrite this formula so you put now the l here and then delta i l there so you now use this uh, 330 micro henry's 
and everything is same so you get now here uh, 0.3636 amps which is smaller than this one so which is then 0.4 amps so that means the following if you increase your inductor value you will decrease your peak peak ripple of the inductor current okay maximum inductor current let's first see that the maximum inductor current is then the average inductor current plus the half of the peak peak inductor current that's mathematically written like so they will give us approximately 3.52 amps in this case now looking at the minimum inductor current in a similar form now you get a minus sign here so that will give you now 3.15 amps and a peak peak value here will be then this value okay now this is larger than zero we already said in the beginning that we can assume that this is a continuous current mode or continuous conduction mode now that is only possible when the minimum inductor current is larger than or equal to zero in this case it is larger than zero so we can say this is indeed continuous current mode let's also check the rms inductor current because this is important for the rating of our inductor which if you select that in the practical sense that is then calculated using this formula which is then the rms value for a triangle here which has the average of il which is in this case 3.33 uh, that's the reason for calculating this we also the peak peak inductor current divided by two and also divided by the square root of three again this is all um, can, can be proved using the integral but that will give us here now 3.34 approximately amps so it's a little bit larger than the average value of the inductor current okay now the final one is our capacitor value which is then this one so then the components are calculated capacitor is related to that ripple we have here and also the switching frequency duty cycle and the resistor so everything is in here except actually the inductor so when you now substitute that here we get here 40 uh, microfarads we can also say let's take this a little bit larger so you can also decrease the ripple because if you uh, increase that uh, the ripple goes down but you can also say we just this is the minimum you need for this design but let's also select this exactly as it is okay what is now the peak peak capacitor current now the peak peak capacitor current is exactly equal to the in ideal case the maximum inductor current which is then 3.52 approximately amps okay another important parameter is the average inductor i mean average diode current which is then this this diode current on average is equal to the minus of the load current why because the average capacitor current is zero that is the definition or the relation which you have from the uh, capacitor action so the average current here is zero or you can say dc current is zero zero that means the diode current is the minus of the load current so that's shown here so it means there's two, two, ohms, uh, two amps i mean because this is minus two amps so you get also two plus two amps for the diode current another important parameter is the maximum allowed equivalent series resistor of the capacitor which will also affect your peak peak uh, ripple in the output for the output voltage so this is then a relationship which approximate the delta vo which is related to that rc and r smaller to rc is that esr for capacitor and delta ic which is the peak peak capacitor current is also in here but that is the maximum inductor current so we can also now relate that to the maximum uh, inductor current like so and now we can calculate that because we know what the delta vo must be because that's one percent of this 20 volts which is then 0.2 volts so we get now here exactly this expression so we get now here almost 57 milli ohms now pretty small you can say that is actually indeed the case but if you have a larger value of this one that will make the uh, ripple even uh, larger because you can see that so this from this uh, relationship you can see that when the rc goes up then the delta vo goes up okay now we have calculated our values let's now look at it in the simulator now this is now the summary of the result we have now determined indeed again the minimum uh, resistor value is shown here now this is 10 ohms this is 40 microfarads and 330 uh, micro henrys input voltage of 30 volts and we also have here the scope for five measurements capacitor current load current lo uh, load voltage load current inductor voltage and inductor current we also see here the rms inductor current which is in this case 3.4 approximately and we had here 3.34 so some error maybe but you can say it's still good enough close to the value what we have calculated okay 
Now, let's go now to the waveforms in the steady state for output voltage and output current. So the yellow one is our load current or output current, and this light blue is our load voltage or output uh, voltage. You see here the time and also the uh, specific value for the current. Indeed, this is now here almost minus 2 amps as required, and also here minus 20 volts as required. So we can say this is as we have wanted according to the specifications. Now let's now zoom in in this detailed waveform so as to see the peak peak values because we have some calculations done. So this is all shown here for the peak peak values on RMS and also the delta VO. We want delta VO maximum 200 millivolts for that output. So this is light blue one. Let's go one by one for the inductor current first. This is the peak maximum and the minimum for the inductor current. And the peak peak value here is 359 milliamps. And we had, uh, as you have, uh, as you can remember from our analysis, it was 30, uh, 360 approximately milliamps. So it is really close to what we actually have calculated. So this is fine. This is actually what we have calculated. Now you see now the uh, inductor uh, voltage here, which is a green plot. Maximum is here uh, 29.9965. So very close to the 30 actually, which is from the calculation. And the minimum is here minus 19.86 volts approximately and that is also close to the minus 20 from the calculations and these are the points here now this is the in load current peak peak an important part here is the load voltage peak peak you see here the maximum and the minimum and peak peak value here is if you do the maximum minus the minimum you get a 201 millivolts, which is now in the vicinity of 200 millivolts, so we can say this is perfectly fine. If you really want some headroom, some safety, you can decrease this by increasing your capacitor. That is actually how it goes. You also see here the capacitor current as the final note here, so this is fine, good enough for most practical purposes. The capacitor current here maximum is 1.976 amps, and the minimum here is minus 1.532 amps. And the peak peak value is here, if you look at it, is 3.51 amps, which is also close to the maximum inductor current, which is actually shown here. So this is again proving that the peak peak capacitor current is the maximum inductor current. All right, this was our example about the design of a buck boost converter. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know in the comments section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. If you need more examples or want to learn more about the converter design, please look at the playlist about our Power Electronics design on this channel. See you next time in another video. Take care.